Introducing the next generation of home automation. It's smart, it's automatic, it's Charizard. Are you tired of the same boring shaped humidifier? Tired of having to just refill it more than you can enjoy it? Engineering Dads has revolutionized the modern humidifier. Now with multiple modes of operation and smart control from anywhere in the world. The smart auto filling Charizard humidifier has a combat power rating of up to infinity, harnessing the power of quantum computing. Charizard, use mist! Now, fill yourself up. Now, mist again! Hello, my name is James, one of the engineering founding fathers, and right beside me what you see is the first homemade smart humidifier, or essential oils diffuser, diffuser, mist maker, whatever you would like to call it. Now what started my idea for this project was constantly having to refill my own diffuser that I had every half an hour. I guess it's a first world problem, but I thought, well how can I best overcome this? And originally I had a chat to some of the other boys, is how can I make a complete automated humidifier? And they pretty much just recommended drilling a hole in the one I have now. Well, we, after discussions we recommended with each other, drill a hole in the one I have now and fill it up using a pump and have it start based on humidity. And I was like, this is a great idea. So we discussed this in the podcast and um, here's how it pretty much went. I mean, yeah, I don't really understand why the essential oil diffusers have such basic shapes. You know, maybe there's a reason why, like there's a, an issue with having a specific shape or character or figure or, I don't know, Pokemon or something. But As have, long as it comes out it, to one nozzle, it'll be fine. Well, that's, if you're going to do a, a thing, Pokemon, so... do Charizard. Yeah, Charizard would be pretty sick, but I wonder how I would do that. It sounds pretty hard. Boys, we can do this. So then I said, well, actually, I can make this. I can make this work. So pretty much what I've got here is a peristaltic pump that fills it up from this big tank over here. And what a peristaltic pump pretty much does is uses a DC motor to rotate the tube to pretty much create a suction pressure into the humidifier or the Charizard here that I've printed out. Um, pretty very simple working um, principle. Now what I have here is the actual apparatus myself and we'll go through the components in a second how I made this happen. Now another thing I wanted to do was as well as auto filling up, I wanted to make sure that I could have smart control as well as field control which is what this button is here. Now the idea of having smart control is so I can read the humidity and temperature anywhere I am as long as it's connected to Wi-Fi with this ESPA266 chip here. Now, the beauty about automated control is that I never have to be around it. I can be driving home from work and before I get in the car, I can start humidifying the room and also know what humidity and temperature is in the room at the same time, as well as um, being able to fill it up if the level's low. Now, these LED lights on its eyes here, although it's for aesthetic, are very, very handy. So when I start the pump, um, it runs for about 35 seconds. Um, some math and calculations, that's how long it takes to fill up the humidifier. Once it fills up, these LED lights here will start flashing, indicating that the um, tank is now full and it's ready for humidifying. Now this will keep running um, as long as I keep it into manual mode. As soon as I put it in auto mode, it will run only when the humidity is less than 80%. Once the relative humidity, go, humidity goes above 80%, that's when the diffuser will stop and we reach satisfied humidity of the room. This is beautiful here because I can just pretty much hit on and off and basically the humidifier will run at my own command. So before we dive deep into today's video, I just want to say thank you to everyone who supported the channel over the past six or so months um, and help us grow our small network which we're looking to expand by showing you how we turn our projects into reality. So before we go into how we built this thing and made it work like we did, please hit that subscribe and notifications button. It's only the click of a button away. So first let's start with our 3D model. I used the Charizard STR and modified it to suit the needs of the project. This involved installing threads so the diffuser could be screwed on and off, a slot for the mist maker piece, a hole for the inlet tubing and two holes for the LED lights. I then endured a long 3 day process of printing this model, gritting my teeth in hopes that the custom Curie supports worked. After the printing is done, it's time to then test the functionality of the design. I first tested the Dragon with Watertight. I was using a sugar container from the supermarket, I drilled a hole into the bottom and installed some outlet tubing for the pump. 
I then 3D printed an adapter piece for the tube and fit this into the hole. This container is then to serve as the water tank for the project. After this, I then tested the pump's capacity and ran experiments on how long it would take to fill the diffuser. Midway through testing, I got a bit bored with the basic grey printed model and remembered one of the famous sayings by a good thread of engineering dads. If you're ever going to take a photo or video of anything, make it sexy. We'll then give the model a good sand. I started from 80 grit and went all the way up to 400 grit, ensuring I got between all the cracks and crevices. I then primed the model with some rust oleum sandable fillable primer to mask out the printed layer lines. I then gave it another sand with 400 grit to remove the primer bumps. After another coat of the primer, it was then time to give it a wet sand. I gave the model a wet sand with 600 grit all the way up to 1500 to give it a nice glossy texture before proceeding to paint the model. As you can see, it's nice and glossy and it looks nice and shiny. I coated the entire Charizard in an acrylic orange before giving it any top detailed coats. I used an assortment of thick and thin brushes to make sure I covered all the fine details and not leaving any patchy layers. While the paint is fully drying, it's time to get into the components. For the hardware and logic, I used an Arduino Uno board, which I coded all the diffusers program into. I then attached a DC-DC buck converter to attach a 12 volt power supply to a 6 volt pump. The next component is a DHT11 humidity and temperature sensor. It uses a capacitative humidity sensing element and a thermistor. Humidity in the air affects capacitance levels in the sensor, which are proportional to the data sent back to the module. One of our main components is the piezoelectric transducer. This component uses mechanical vibration on the surface of water. The kinetic energy transforms liquid water into steam. The frequency is generated by an NE55 time timer module that was supplied by Seed Studio. I then combined these elements and integrated them into the Dragon. Another very important piece of kit here is the NPM120 transistor. This is a MOSFET in the circuit, which Sean did an excellent job explaining in the Spook Mirror video. I highly recommend checking it out after this. Basically, the transistor channels current to a dedicated output whilst acting as a switch in the circuit, which is what we're going to use for our 6 volt pump. I'm adding a 1K resistor on the input side of the MOSFET to ensure we don't blow the little guy up. And as you can see, I've integrated it into the code as well. These technologies are amazing as Arduino will recognize them as a generic output. We're going to now go ahead and solder all these components together before attaching it to our pump shown here. Between the power and the ground wires, you'll notice a dark connected bridge across the wires, which is known as a 4001 snubber diode. I can't stress the importance of adding this across the wires as it will prevent current going in the reverse direction and potentially frying your entire circuit. This should be done for all inductive loads like motors, solenoids, etc. Lastly, we're going to add in our ESP8266 module. This component is what's going to get us connected to the Wi-Fi and grant us smart control. Once we've gone ahead and added this into the circuit, it's time to put everything together. The last part of the wiring involved creating a common ground and VCC route for the circuit, then integrating it into the Arduino board, which I'll show you now. it's time to finally put the project together, so you will see the final model Charizard. I printed a junction box to hold all the wires and components in one place with a fine print saying, gotta miss them all, which is the name of the project, with a button on top that allows us to control the diffuser locally.
Next, we have our pump as shown previously, which will be mounted externally to the other electronics. Over here, we have our little water tank that will sit adjacent to the other components. Its capacity is about 15 times of the actual diffuser, which takes about a refill time from 30 minutes all the way up to a working day when we consider the effective humidification rate. Now you can see I've got some cotton wicks. The role of the wicks is to absorb moisture and take it to the bottom of the atomizer piece to ensure there's always water available to the module. I'm going to go ahead and insert this into the base of the Charizard. As a demonstration, we're going to run the diffuser in manual mode by turning the atomizer state to on. You can now see the mist is being created. The exact same function will then occur if we press the button on the junction box. To say this is a project that I'm actually proud of is probably an understatement. Um, this really combines things we've done in our last videos from 3D modeling to electronics and putting it into a new home automation system and one that really I haven't seen before. Now, um, with all DIY projects, there comes the downfalls and things you wish you could do better next time. So here are a couple of things that I wish I could do better. Um, so firstly, the design isn't really modular. I've actually mounted it to a slat wall I made in a separate project, um, but that was just a personal preference. Being in my room, it was nice and easy. Um, you have these tubes here. Obviously, you take these out, um, there'll be leaks and you'll see kind of water go everywhere. So a question you might ask yourself is, well, I can't really take this anywhere with me. And um, well, the answer is this is really made to be fixed in one position. If it was auto, if it was auto filling and you could move it around, that would be quite impressive because you'd have to take around a separate tank with you. So um, my idea was I'm always going to be humidifying the same room, but that's fine. If you don't want to have an auto system, um, you can still have a smart system where you turn it off by your phone and control it. You have to feel it yourself. Um, so luckily this has the luxury of doing that. So all I have to do is just take out this tube and plug it in um, with some little filler that I 3D printed a while ago. The next downfall is that the ASP8266 chip, um, it's great, but it's very, very hard to manage using on Duino. So if you're going to do any Wi-Fi projects, I recommend actually getting one of the pre-made chips um, using probably Wemos D1 Mini. Um, I used it in the Lovebox video, which was um, really great. Really never disconnects from the internet. So like, a problem you'll realize is that if you don't do the coding right and all the, also the wiring, um, it doesn't draw enough power and therefore the ESP8266 chip will tend to cut out every now and again, which is highly frustrating when all you're trying to do is get it to work. As you can also see at the top of the app, humidity and temperature is being sent back to blink every 10 seconds. What I'm showing you now is the device running in auto mode when the humidity is less than 80%. A final fail safe, to make sure the pump works within its own cutout time. As you can see, the pump will run for a certain amount of time before the LED lights start flashing, indicating the diffuser is full and the pump will now cut out. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment and subscribe to our channel. If this was a project you genuinely enjoyed, please comment below of how you would have approached it and what other projects you would like to see. Until next time.